Alrighty, here's a little look at the Woody Welder 9000. It's uh, my first attempt at building a gasogen. <coughs> and uh, it worked surprisingly well, but is now in a state of change as I want to improve upon the design. Um, using car alternators, it's proven to be possible to do welding at quite a high level of power. I can get three, uh, 4,800 watts out of those alternators these two here, two pretty much the same. In a later video I'm going to show what I did to actually make these into welders. The two alternators are connected together so as the combined output is fed through the arc welding cable that I've got wrapped around here and out to the handpiece, positive on the handpiece but it could probably be negative just the same and of course negative earth here. The alternators are driven by a Toyota 1300cc engine. It's 25 years old now. It's uh, definitely a museum piece. <laughs> Still gets the job done. Um, so I've got a pulley system here. One alternator either side to even out the pulling forces on the engine. And of course a simple tensioning system here to uh, allow me to tighten up the belts as much as required power source for the engine comes from two locations a very recently added gasoline tank here holds maybe a couple of litres and um, if I want to have convenience and start the engine straight away I can simply switch on this valve down here and feed fuel to the engine um, when the carburetor is all dry and I want to run on wood gas I simply open this valve here open it up, lets wood gas in, and the engine runs on that instead of petroleum. Now the wood gas was originally supplied by what was a FEMA engine wrecker. Um, it lived up to its name, it tarred up that engine over there and I had to pull it all to pieces and clean it all out. More than once I hasten to add. Um, but the output from the gasogen uh, is fed through my version of a cyclone, it's simply a four inch, six millimeter thick, or quarter inch thick, uh, steel tube. And uh, the gas enters, swirls around, and of course the particulates fall down to a collection vessel here. I can undo that lid and pop all the rubbish out of there. And way up above the point where the gas enters is the discharge point. The gas then travels down to the bottom of the second tube and uh, this isn't a cyclone, it's simply a precipitation pipe uh, for want of a better word. The gas enters that and discharges quite a lot of moisture into there so the cooling process of course is taking place there also. Um, so generally when I open this I get a lot of dust and when I open this I get a lot of water. Um, the gas then goes into a fairly big radiator with electric fans on it. They operate on 12 volts from the car battery that starts and runs the engine. And uh, by the time it's gone through this the gas is at room temperature. So when I put my hand here and feel it, it feels just as cold as any other part of the system. This is where things start to get a bit messy in terms of the design. Um, in the early days I had this blower up on high, way up here, and above it was situated a burner. The downside was that as the tar and other rubbish um, was being pulled through the system it would actually accumulate in this blower and then erupt through the burner and spray out all over everything, making a heck of a mess. So what I've done now is I've plumbed it downhill. The blower sucks the gas through the system, goes downhill, very hard to see but it's in there somewhere, and emerges at this simple swirl burner. The swirl burner has a spark plug in here, which I should be able to activate and turn on the electronics. I don't know how visible that is, but the, uh, the spark plug automates the lighting process, so the gas simply uh, ignites in there and burns uh, quite nicely, and of course the heat from it is directed back towards the gasifier, so it's, um, there's some uses actually made of it. 
uh, where things are a little unusual is the way I've got these valves set up. I've got four valves around this filter tank and the filter tank, just going to that primarily, is filled with wood shavings and alpaca hair. Specifically, those two alpacas, oh come on focus, there they are, blurry alpacas. Anyway, those two little mini camels over there provide the fluff that filters my gas. <laughs> Anyway, going back to the filter, um, I've got it set up so as when this valve is open, <laughs> there we go, it's a bit stiff, this vacuum unit draws unfiltered gas down through the burner. Then when I close this valve and open this one, the filter tank gets put into the circuit and as a result of that, this blower then takes filtered gas down to the burner and the difference can be seen in the flame colour it uh, turns towards blue once the filter is activated and when I'm happy with the results of that I then open this valve which admits the gas to this very recently added bubbler uh, what I've done is I've got a pipe running all the way down here stopping at the bottom filled with holes water up to this level here hopefully collects any residual particulates, tar and other goodness that the engine doesn't really appreciate. Um, a series of baffles in here prevent the splashiness from bringing water up to this point. And it actually works. The gas coming out of here is relatively dry. It's then admitted directly to the victim, I mean, I mean the engine, <coughs> um, which has so far run quite nicely on this setup. Uh, I'm able to get about 4,000 RPM out of this engine and under load up to 4,800 watts the speed drops off to around about 3,500 RPM uh, according to my high technology control panel here. Uh, eventually more switches and dials will be added here as the design of this gasifier develops so I've got them I've got these set up as removable panels, I can pull that out, make up a new panel and put it in. It's all done on my home built CNC machine, it saves me a heck of a lot of work. Now, um, where to from here? That pretty much covers the gasifier and the engine. Uh, I plan to make up a video fairly soon showing what I did to these alternators. Uh, these are, I think, Bosch 100 amp alternators. They're slightly different from each other, but they still perform very nicely together. There's a regulator on the rear of the alternator, which in this particular case can be simply unbolted or unscrewed, and when you pull it out, it reveals a couple of brushes that run on the rings of the rotor. And for this, I simply cut the connections off inside the brush carrier, and brought wires out that can be seen here. They end here in a couple of bullet connectors and um, the same arrangement has been set up on the other alternator so as the two alternators are wired in parallel uh, on the uh, exciter inputs as they are on the outputs and of course earthed to each other via the metal frame that carries them. So I plan to make a video demonstrating how I did for these alternators and uh, hopefully that will be useful for folks who would like to do the same kind of thing. I've been pretty impressed with the performance of alternators generally. They stand up to years of ad use like this. I've been using alternators in this way for 12 years now and never had a failure, which is pretty good. As um, you'd imagine that kind of ad use is going to destroy an alternator. Um, I'm hoping I've covered all the bases here. Perhaps there's just one thing I should add. My arrangement for feeding the gas to the engine is perhaps unusual, as I think most folks feed the gas in at the air filter, and perhaps I could have done that too. Um, my approach has been different in that I'm using the throttle as the air admission uh, butterfly. I'm using this valve as the gas mixing valve, so the two of these set the engine up and this one has become the throttle and uh, I guess there's really no reason I couldn't take this gas around 
into here instead and it would work just as well I'm sure and be equally easy to change between wood gas and gasoline um, but that's just the arrangement I came up with um, at the moment I've learned a lot from this I've learned what not to do uh, FEMA is uh, basically short for don't do it this way because you will wreck your engine um, bitter experience is something that I'd like to allow or let others avoid when they repeat any sort of processes. As FEMA is a great way to learn how to make a gasifier, but it's not a good way to treat your engine. Um, so I'm going to be uh, ripping this all apart very soon and building a design based on the work of Stephen Abades and Arvid Olsen. Uh, they've worked together to create an amazing design that is referred to as the Victoria the designs for which um, are given away quite freely on the Yahoo Wood Gas group. So that's the place to go, I think, to do some good learning, as these are good folks who are happy to discuss the workings of their design. They've been through all the bitter experiences that I've been through, but unlike me, they've actually learned <laughs> from it, whereas I'm kind of stuck until I get ideas uh, from others who actually know what they're doing. Okay fellas, I'm just hoping the wind hasn't ruined this video as it's really blowing right now. I've got a piece of cloth stuck on the side of the camera to suppress the wind noise and I'm hoping it's working. Alright fellas, Merry Christmas since that's this time of the year at the moment. Cheers!